Hello and welcome to the SEMTI 2020 presentation of Risk Behind the Scenes, a Protocol Deep Dive. I'm your host, Dr. Ciro Noronha. Um, I am the EVP of Engineering at Cobalt Digital and also the Risk Forum President for the year 2020. I'm also a member of the Risk Activity Group. So what's the problem we are trying to solve? I want to use the internet as a cost-effective means cheap means of transporting high quality broadcast grade video. So I want to have my cake and eat it. So what's preventing me from, from doing that? Well, the delivery of packets of the internet is not guaranteed. And every time you drop a packet, there's a video glitch. I need to be able to combine links, either for performance or for reliability. Yeah, there's solutions out there that do some of that, but uh, high, this have high lat latency, which is no good for live cases. I need to have my content to be protected so it doesn't get stolen. And bad people shouldn't be able to hijack my link and push their content instead of mine. Also, we're talking about the internet, there's IT people, they are very busy and whatever I do needs to be easy for them. So that's the problem we're trying to solve. Other people have solutions like that. They have been for like 10 years. Um, so what makes RIST different? Uh, RIST was designed as a joint effort from the, uh, in an effort started by the Video Services Forum. It's a joint effort by, uh, from leading experts from many, many companies, people with hundreds of combined many years of experience, and they freely donated this, this time to the project. So it's a specification for interoperability. And what does that do for you? You can mix and match equipment. You can get whatever the best is for your application. You're not locked to a proprietary solution from some, some vendor. And you do not need to compromise quality because the experts chose the best possible solution for every aspect of the protocol. So when, this, when did the, all these beautiful things happen? Uh, the RIST AG was created in 20, February 2017 at uh, VTrans, created within the Visual Services Forum at the request of broadcasters. It took us a year to come up with what was called Simple Profile. It was happening in April 2018 at uh, NAB. We had an interrupt right after that in May of 18. Uh, second draft with some things we learned from that interrupt in July. And then we had the public interrupt in September of 18. In October, we had a risk Simple Profile published. And uh, uh, early next year, you already had uh, commercial products. Um, 2019 was main profile and was uh, published in March of 2020 and you can find already main profile uh, products available. So what's this business of profiles, main, whatever? So uh, RIST is organized in profiles and levels and we started with simple profile which includes ARQ, uh, retransmission throttling, link aggregation um, as, as main features. And then we went into main profile, which, it, which adds basically tunneling, encryption, and authentication. So those two are released. You can get the uh, specification for free. And the AG is now working on advanced profile. And you can see a number of features being considered for advanced profile. So I've been talking about profiles and levels. So let's, let's uh, show that. We have simple profile, which is the basic um, reliability that was uh, published in VSF TR061. And then you have main profile that adds tunneling and multiplexing. And you have a baseline level with the tunneling and some crypto levels with the DTLS level and PSK level. And I'll get to those in a minute. So let's start with simple profile. What's in risk simple profile? You have a packet loss recovery using ARQ. So you don't have acknowledgements. The packets are received correctly and only what's lost is retransmitted. Um, there's multi-link support where you use multiple links either for in increased uh, redundancy, uh, reliability or redundancy. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the details of that because there's a presentation in this track about, especially about that. Uh, it's firewall friendly, and I'll, I'll show you how. 
and supports IP multicast. Uh, the, the, as I pointed out before, and I'll keep saying that it was built using uh, standards, existing standards whenever possible. Now let's go do the deep dive I promised you. The stream is using standard RTP. So uh, it, then it's compatible with non-risk devices, at least without the protection. So there's a baseline compatibility and it does require two UDP ports, one for RTP, one for RTCP. The sender will transmit periodic RTCP messages to establish the state in firewall. And the receiver then writes that either with NAC messages or uh, uh, RTT echo message to measure round trip uh, latency. So for if packets are lost, the receiver requests a retransmission using uh, the SNAC message. And there's two types of NAC messages for efficiency. One is the RFC 8585 bit mask NAC, which is used for salt and pepper losses when you, you, you lose a packet of, uh, here and there. And there's a range NAC when you have a block loss. So here's an example of how ARQ works. I have a sender transmitting to a receiver uh, over the internet and the same sender keeps a copy of the packets it transmitted for a while. So we send a packet and let's say this one is lost. The receiver knows it's lost because of uh, RTP sequence numbers. So it sends the packet and say, I, I lost that one, send it back to me. It's a knack. The, the sender says, okay, I have it, there you go. But let's say we are unlucky and that one is lost too. So lost again, it takes a network round trip delay to figure that out on the receiver side. So I send it back. Now give it to me, and since I'm running out of space in this slide, this one is going to make it. And that takes another network round trip delay. So these packets can be retried multiple times, and that gives you a trade-off between reliability and latency. The, if you need the very high reliability, you can retry multiple times or prepare to retry multiple times. If you want it fast, you can give up a bit of the reliability, but it's under your control, unlike many other protocols where it's fixed either all the way to one side or all the way to the another side. Um, I claim that this works uh, well with firewalls. Let me show you that. I have a sender and receiver. There's, they are behind firewalls like normally, everything is behind firewalls. So in the sending side, the firewall doesn't need any configuration. This needs to get the traffic out. The receiving side, you need to forward the two ports, two consecutive ports, the RTP and the RTCP port to the receiver. The sender transmits to those uh, ports and the receiver listens on those ports. So let's send something, some video, exciting video, hopefully. So video goes as RTP and since the firewall is set, it's go, gets, it gets over there, no problem. The sender is also sending RTCP messages. The content of this message is usually not uh, useful uh, except for the RTT echo, but it establishes a state in the firewall. Then if there's packet loss, the uh, receiver writes that state back to ask for a retransmission. In fact, the receiver is periodically sending uh, packets that way to, to keep that uh, firewall uh, st stable, right? Uh, warm, if you will, so it doesn't lose state. So that's how RIST works with firewalls. All right, we got, we got, we got the packets there. That's RIST's uh, simple profile, gets the packets there. All right, so what does main profile adds? The main, the very important thing the main profile adds is encryption. It protects high value streams in flight on the internet so people cannot see your content. Uh, you may even be contractually obliged to do that. Authentication. Make sure that the other endpoint is who you think you are. You send a reporter out in the field, the reporter is sending some content back to the station. Is that thing coming from into the station what the reporter is sending or someone, hi someone hijacking it? The reporter is sending content. Is it going into the station or is someone hijacking it? So authentication is what fixes that. Tunneling. Tunneling is something you do for your IT guys. My previous slide, you saw I had to open two ports and two ports per stream. Every stream needs two ports. That may be a lot of ports. IT is not gonna be happy with you about that. So it would be nice to combine multiple streams into a single port for firewall configuration. 
And it will be nice to be able, since you have that all in a, in a nice little tunnel, it would be nice to have non-risk data run there. So a technician could ride that connection back and, and make adjustments on the device. Other, other things that happen in risk main profile, high bitrate operation for high bitrate streams and bandwidth optimization by uh, no packet deletion and insertion. So let's, they, let's go deep dive into tunneling and multiplexing. The purpose is to com combine one of my more simple profile flows plus optional arbitrary data traffic into a single network flow using UDP. So only one port needs to be open regardless of the number of flows. Only one encryption session is required. Uh, and the session can be initiated from either endpoint. Doesn't matter if you're a sender or a receiver. And it's bi-directional, so it can be sending and receiving in both directions, many streams. The same infrastructure you can use to uh, send in-band control, such as SNMP, web, or the management traffic. Let's say the device has got a web interface and you ride that connection back to manage it. So deep dive. What did we use in, in, in main profile? GRE over UDP, RFC 8086. And we, we come up with two modes. The first mode is called full datagram mode, where a complete layer three packet is encapsulated. Uh, so you can send end-to-end -end addresses and ports, and most importantly, in any IP packets. So that's your in-band control. Um, the overhead of that is about 32 bytes. So it's 2.4% over a basic 70S RTP packets. If you don't like that, then we have a reduced overhead mode that's custom to RIST, where we only put the UDP ports. There's no addresses, no other thing, no other traffic, only RIST streams. Destination is always the endpoint. And that costs only eight bytes or 0.6% over your usual 70S RTP packet. Optional tunnel negotiation. We do, the tunnel endpoint sends something we call a keep alive message just to keep it warm. And that keep alive message has an optional JSON payload, which has some additional information, uh, which can be used for inner IP address negotiation, product identification, so you know what's talking to you. The other side is optional, useful for support issues, and some other uh, configuration that we can put there. And the nice thing is, since it's JSON, it's text based, is extendable. So if we need other things or vendors, vendors need other information, they can put in that message in a, com a compatible manner. Content protection, the crypto part, right? We selected the DTLS, data, the Datagram Transport Layer Security for both encryption and authentication. The advantage is this is the UDP version of the TLS technology already used in the internet. It's the stuff you use to connect to your bank. Uh, with crypto, you don't want to be inventing uh, homegrown solutions. You want stuff that's out there that's vetted, that experts went through over it and, and said it's good. So go with what's established. Um, and there's an ability to define multiple ciphers and um, to ensure interoperability, risk defined a subset of the ciphers that everybody needs to support. Uh, the DTLS is applied to the full tunnel. So one encryption session can uh, handle multiple streams. So requ require cipher suits. Again, deep dive. Um, all vendors must support these. Uh, include, it, there's one AES-28 with two authentication modes and one AES-256. Why? Because um, some, in some parts of the world, you cannot do 256, it's illegal, legal requirements. But in, in other parts of the world, if you, if you come in with a 128, they're gonna laugh at you and say, no, we want 256. So there's no one size fits all. And uh, it's available, all of them are available and you can turn, turn them on and off depending on your needs. Um, or you can also have no encryption, which is for test, testing or optional fallback. It's a good compromise between encryption strength and ability to adhere to local legal requirements. Authentication, I keep talking about authentication. It's what comes with DTLS. It's certificate based authentication. This is why when you connect to your bank, you are sure to connect to that you are connecting to the bank. Um, the difference here is that you can authenticate both sides if you want. 
and we leave the user in full control. You can use a whitelist, you can roll on your own CA, it's all supported. If you don't want to go to the to certificate based authentication, uh, RIST includes something called TLS SRP, another, another FC that is also supported. Pre shared key operation. Uh, RIST main profile supports a pre shared key mode of operation, it's one of the levels where uh, you use uh, AS, again, 128 and 256 with a pre-shared passphrase from which a key is derived, that key can be rotated. So um, this is important, uh, suitable for one-to-many and unidirectional environments. So if you're doing multicast, if you're doing satellite replacement or you're doing satellite itself, that's, that's the mode for you. Um, again, I'm not gonna get into a lot of details on this because there will be another talk in this, this track about that. Other main profile features, uh, bandwidth optimization for transport stream, which is basically you remove the null packets, mark where they are and put them back. Uh, another talk is going to talk about that in more detail and support for high bitrate streams, which is an ex extension of the RTP singlet number. All right, I like it, I wanna buy it. Uh, so there's many vendors that have encoders with built-in support, many vendors with decoders with uh, risk built-in support. You can buy gateways that add risk support to legacy device. There's open source risk implementations if you want to put that in your device. And there's system integrations with uh, risk expertise. Did you say open source? Yeah, I'm interested. So where is it? Is this? The main open source project is Librist, although it's also integrated in GStreamer and Upipe. And for tools, there's a Wireshark plugin and it's supported in um, VLC. So um, uh, there will be another talk, talk in this track about open source risk, but it's available and it's free. So it's not only open specification, you can get the specification for free, you can get implementation for free as well. If you need help, there's a, a, a risk channel on video dev Slack and the risk engineers hang around there so you can ask your questions there. So where is this of all this free stuff? You can uh, download the specifications for free from the VSF website. You can go to the risk activity webpage and you can hit the risk forum uh, website for events, case studies, studies and everything. And if you wanna watch stuff, we have a cute uh, risk promo video. It's just, uh, just a minute, but it's as cute. An ARQ primer if you wanna see it and at every risk every major trade show including the nmb that wasn't this year we had a multi-vendor demo streaming during the, the the show and we have recordings of that so if you go to the to the wrist forum uh, youtube channel there's a playlist with all those demos and thank you very much for your attention and uh, I hope you enjoy this, this uh, deep dive of uh, risk technology and feel free to uh, stop by at the risk forum booth and talk to me. I'll be there uh, from time to time. Thank you.